Yep. Hey, Charles. Hey, hey, hey Charles. man. What's up? What's up, brother? We're live, Charles. We are live. We're live, Charles. So let's. Uh, What's happening, Charlie, on this feel good Friday? Got well, my little shirt. Got my little shirt, buddy. Got my yeah. little shirt. It's one of my favorite Aloha shirts. I love the print. I love the print. Oh, gosh, man. I don't even know where to start, buddy. How was your day? Let's start with that. How was your day? Well, I had to, uh, you know, just send a shout out to, yes, please share. Please share, everyone. Had to uh, start getting all my lesson plans down, getting them ready, because as you know, I'm in the security field and I'm, uh, I'm one of several in Hawaii anyway, that is uh, certified statewide to teach those um, who need their security guard cards to be licensed to operate in the state. The expiration date is June 30th. So as you can well imagine, the Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs had everyone's Card all expire on the same date, <laughs> like some 40,000 of them statewide. And so, needless to say, I, I'm, I, I've got uh, inquiries from many different entities that have a security firm here on island. And so, I'm, I'm putting together everything to teach them because they need, this year is a recertification year. And so, that's how my day has been going so far, brother. But other than that, been, uh, you know, um, I also wanted to uh, say that uh, I was watching that uh, that uh, the Floyd murder trial, and do you know that I'm? I, I gotta admit, man, I I actually get anxiety attacks when I see when he was on the ground, because I can only picture myself. What if I was in that position? Would I be able to turn enough to expand my lungs to get air? And it seems almost impossible. And I and I get these anxiety attacks and I just I had to turn the I had to turn the TV off it's like no I, I can't go through this it's just too much to watch yeah it's a it's an unfortunate situation man it's an unfortunate situation and um you know we I mean no nobody wins nobody wins you know uh, nobody wins in that thing and it's just unfortunate yeah. I I was watching uh, part of it today. Uh, well, I was watching highlights of it where they were having, uh, they were showing excerpts from all the different medical experts. And uh, yeah, we say the jury's got a tough decision. And um, yes. my fear is what happens after the trial. Uh, whichever yeah. way it goes, whichever way it goes, uh, you know, I just hope everyone can remain civil and not go nuts. I mean, they, you know, people up on the mainland, people go nuts when their team wins a championship. Whether it's a Super Bowl or a World Series or whatever it is, uh, you know, they, they riot when they win. They riot when they lose. So I just hope everyone can can keep up. You know, we just don't need any more, uh, any more harm. And I just, you know, you know, that... So I love living here in Hawaii. I mean, you know, we get demonstrations, protests, but uh, you know, it's very limited and civil for the most part. I just mm -hmm. worry. I worry for my kids, who's in Oregon, not far from Portland. Uh, yeah, it's just, uh, I just, it's just, there's no winners in this thing. No winners. Um, we can only pray for everybody involved, all the families involved. But. Well, before you go on, brother, you have a nice Aloha shirt on there, brother. Thank you, man. You very too, nice. bro. You too. Yeah. We got, not, I, I actually, I'm, I'm looking at the shirt and I'm not even going to take it off tonight, man. I'm sleeping with this shirt on. I like it. I really <laughs> like the shirt. It goes well with my salt and pepper hair. <laughs> That's nice. Boom. It's a, it's a very. Okay, guys, share, share, share. We're going to talk about a bunch of things tonight. Um, and, and, and let me just start off real quick. Police chief Honolulu resigned or retired today. Announcer, uh, Retirement after she got some scathing reviews. Uh, 
evaluations from the commission. It's clear what, what's happening up on Oahu. They don't want her as the chief. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to get into the debate of whether it's warranted or not. My, my you know, they spoke to the Shopo uh, president, Malcolm Bluetooth, and he said, you know, this chief has been through a lot. Yeah. Um, in this last year. And there's been some controversy on spending and overtime and all of that. And, and, and she's, yeah, she's got to deal with that. But uh, yeah, it was just quite of a shock. I didn't expect that to happen, um, but I totally understand. And I heard her speech and she says, you know, it appears that she's not, um, she's not being supported by the, by the uh, commission and by the mayor's administration. So She's, she's stepping down, and uh, now the challenge is to is to replace her. I mean, Charlie, honestly, would you want to be a police chief in today's times? Well, let me ask you this: you 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 know my story. I, I told you what my story was, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, it it was it was kind of uh, I want to say bittersweet when I when I heard the news today. But you know, there's there's so many factors that went into it. Yeah, uh, yeah. there's not one specific thing that I can pinpoint that would drill it in. I mean, you know, I served on the Kauai Police Chief when we 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 had a tumultuous time. You know that very well. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it, you know, we have to do what our 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 rules say and follow those rules. But then there's this thing called common sense. Sometimes you got to let common sense kick in. Now, if you're going to use rules with no common sense and just hold it, hold the line tight, then that means that there's there's definitely some uh, there's definitely some political influence there that kind of slights. I don't know if you heard the mayor's press conference. Uh, he did a press conference right afterwards, and and they asked him how uh, you know what does he see in the new chief? How, how does this process go? And he said, you know, the, the, that is the sole responsibility of the commission, but he also said that he's gonna play an active role in the selection of the chief. And that is a no, no. That has been taken to court. And uh, so, you know, I think he's still naive. I think that the mayor is still coming from a business private sector where uh, the rules are a little different. So that's gonna be something to watch. We'll see how that thing pans out. Uh, if he decides to move, if he decides to move forward and play an active role, then expect civil lawsuits. I mean, that's just what's going to happen. I, you see, you know what, what you're telling me, I, I can vividly remember my tenure as the, um, as the chair of the police commission doing, doing those times when we took it all the way up to the Hawaii Supreme Court. Okay. In order for a police chief of any county to be the head of your law enforcement agency. It has to be absent from any outside political influence, even though the commissioners themselves are appointed by the mayor. That's why they put seven commissioners, because no one commissioner has the overall power to, to say this or that. You, got, you, have, you have to have a consensus. And when they vote, that's that's the part, you know. And yeah. you know, um, you know, as as individuals, you know, you you subject to sunshine, sunshine laws. So as as people say, well, you know, the commissioners they meet they meet outside. I said, and if they get caught, and if they're discussing matters that they will take up for a vote, it can be very problematic for them. Okay, so there's a lot of things that goes into that. As far as the commission and what they do with this police chief, and even if they decide on the next police chief, I'm pretty sure the Honolulu Charter or police commission rules are the same as Kauai. And that is, I believe the mayor is an ex officio. They can sit in on meetings. They can't sit in, I don't believe they can sit in on uh, executive meetings they can make their point heard but they have no as far as a a seat at the table that has a vote zero no. 
I mean, the influence is there, obviously. The, the mayor appoints the commissioners, but you know, to come out and blatantly say, I'm going to have an active part, um, that I think uh, I'm sure he'll be corrected tonight by the, by the Corp Council. I'm Very sure the dangerous. Corp Council will tell him, bro, you cannot say that kind of stuff. But anyway, we'll see. How about the departure of our uh, Department of Health contact tracing director? Another one. Bloop, bloop. Bye bye. Uh, and I, this, will tie, I, this will tie right into what we're going to talk about, but. What, what's your thoughts on that, man? Just say bye, I'm out. I think what's what's pretty evident, especially when you know the departure is 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 in this fashion. I think there because you look Oahu, if I'm not mistaken, they have a thousand and what thirty-two active cases. Oh yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. I believe it's 1,032. That's a lot of active cases. I remember when we talked about it before when Bruce Anderson was the director? I said, man, you try complete something first before you move on to the next, right? And that's why it was so important. You try to surround these infections as best as possible and work them until you come down to the root cause. But no, they only took them to like maybe... You know, if we if we broke it up in generations, maybe they were the first or second generation that they stopped. It's okay, we did our job. No, you know, we did our job. So, 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 what is the end result? You have these many open cases. So, I I personally think it's a little, it's a little um, politicalish in a sense. Yeah, I I think I think I mean, I'm not going to speculate, but I, it, it's obvious that he, she didn't leave because she was happy. She didn't leave because she was in agreement with what was going on. She's a professional. Right. She was brought in for a specific purpose, and uh, but that, that's quite telling. Um, it's quite telling. And, and and at this time, where where with the variants, you know, now is the time we really got to crack down on the contact tracing. And uh, uh, anyway, we're one more. This is my last time. Share, 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 share. I'll, right. I'll, I'll do the second half. I'll do the second half. So no worry. <laughs> but, but what about our friend Les Condo? He's on that one. Ah, real roaded, man. He's getting real roaded. You know, uh, those legislators better be careful. They better be extremely careful because Les Condo is, is uh, somewhat protected uh, in his job for, from political interference and political influence. That, that is why you have an, uh, an independent legislative auditor and uh, you know, we don't have enough time. In fact, I'm going to see if we can get him on uh, next week or, or the following week. But, you know, I, you, you got to welcome the audits, guys. And, and when, you, when you don't agree or when the audits are exposing shortcomings or inefficiencies, go fix it. Go fix it. But this legislature, uh, this Speaker of the House, man, he's a dangerous man. He, he just, he going openly going after him and, and uh, setting up his own committee. It's not their function. So... That one's going to be a, that's going to come and it's going to come with a price for our taxpayers again. And, and, you know, I don't understand how these guys are allowed to, you know, I sat on a council for a long time and we were reminded quite frequently about the separation of power, the, uh, that you didn't have the uh, authority to direct the administration to do anything. But in this case with less, uh, you know, you've had him on the show a couple of times. He's he's a he's a he's a smart. He's an attorney. He's a smart guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, as he starts to uncover inefficiencies, as as he starts to be blatantly disregarded by OHA and other agencies that refuse to talk to him, uh, maybe it's time for the feds to step in. Maybe it's time for the government corruption unit of the FBI to step in. And I got to tell you what, they are watching these things. They are watching these things. So. That's another story that that uh, we'll be following as well, and we try to get less on uh, to get a, an update. That that'd be pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Well, you know, I I, I did want to say also that uh, you know everything we've just discussed within the last ten minutes, from the police chief, chief all the way to Les Condo. There is, you know, for a lay person, you cannot help but think. There is this sense of political influence in coming at all different angles. This is 
This is probably uh, the worst I've seen it in in a good long while. You know, if you got one of, if you got one target, and you know that's, then some a lot of times there's writing on the walls, right? But then when you got a new ed, when you get a new administration in there, and you got all of these things happening, and everything is just falling like dominoes, you you, you gotta just wonder. I said, and and you know, like like I said, for a lay person, you know there. Uh, you know, we're not into the thick of all this muck that's going on. But man, if, if you were to watch some of the shows on Netflix that talk about uh, government, you know, and the stories about government corruption and so forth, th this kind of has the scent that's permeating right now. It's floating around there. Now, I, I hope and pray somebody can just come out and say, well, you know, we took this position because of this. We took this. But nobody is. It, it's just like, we're doing it quietly, and you guys can grumble all you want, but at the end of the day, is bye bye or whatever, right? And so it leaves it leaves the voter, and that's why we say, you know, in come election time, voters, vote with conviction, vote with your heart, because if you don't, you're gonna get the same old rigmarole happen over and over and over again. But just vote, you know, vote with what you know, vote for. You remember that one time had that guy, um, what his name was, Akana? He ran Ooh. for mayor, big, uh, Akana, mayor on the Big Island, the older guy. Yeah. He came out of left field. It, it was just like Jimmy Carter. He came out of left field. Nobody ever expected him to be president, right? But hey, things were different. Things were different. He won. Yeah. He won because they voted for change. They voted for honesty. They voted for... No more mm -hmm. corruption. Look at in Honolulu right now. The airport maintenance shop raided. People get arrested. Planning department in city and county Honolulu, bribery, arrested. And now these guys pleading guilty already. They're singing like birds. Well, let me tell you, they're going to start tweet, tweet. Watch what's going to happen out of that story. And again, how, how do you fix it, right? You know, Charlie, you're so right. I mean, you know, everybody, we vote because we know the name. We vote because of the beautiful commercials and brochures. You know, if this pandemic, doesn't wake people up and uh, start looking at other candidates in your districts that actually care about the people. Like you said, Charlie, no complain, enjoy it, accept it, and uh, ignore it if you, if, if, if you choose, but it ain't gonna change. What's up, Terrence? Thanks for doing my wife's hair. She just got home. <laughs> um, yeah, man, you know, th that's the power of the people is when we vote. It's got to vote. It's got to vote. So yeah. we, we, we're seeing, we're seeing it all around us. Uh, every time you turn around, there's some new conspiracy or some new corruption case. And, uh, but, you know, you got to look at, at the leaders. You got to look at the people making decisions. Um, I, 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 I kind of going to go right into the, the topic, Charlie because mm -hmm. I think there's a lot, and I do want to share that breaking news that just came out from the Star Advertiser, but mm -hmm. I was watching the news tonight, and um, the Department of Health spokesperson, I forget it, what is his name, Brooks Bear or whatever his name yeah, used to be. Former, former news. news tonight, he comes out with this, and it's the first time I heard it. It's the first time I heard it, but he said that, because we keep hearing from our friend in the governor's, the lieutenant governor's office, 70%, 60 to 70%, we reach uh, immunizations, we get herd immunity. Well, <laughs> tonight he's saying a little change, 70 to 90%. I don't know how many of you saw it on the news tonight. Now they're saying 70 to 90% of the entire population needs to be vaccinated, including children including children. We know that children can't get vaccinated yet. We also know that the variants are making its way here. I mean, it's here, it's here. And in fact, uh, they put out the numbers tonight. It was quite alarming. I didn't, I didn't have my pencil around. I couldn't write it down and I couldn't rewind my TV, but it was like 734 cases of the California virus and I mean, a variant. But all of a sudden now they're saying Brooks Bear said, 
70 to 90 percent. That's 20 percent difference, guys. What kind of estimate is that? You know, 70 to 90 percent of the entire population, including children. And the more variants that we identify, the higher the percentage goes. In other words, we are far from herd immunity. That, that's what the message was. And we better be careful. We better be careful. So in Hawaii, 59% of the variants that have been identified, and again, I don't have the number, I apologize. I was trying to find it before we went on live. 59% of the variants identified are California virus, I mean, of variants. 8% is the UK and 2% is the South African. So the variants are here, it's, it's more contagious, so we expect more spread. And then we come on, wow, now Charlie's getting, he's getting sexy now. He's if you getting... take ten and you write the same time, guess what? If you were to have the 3D glasses, this is what it would look like. There. Yeah, if you go to uh, if you go to um, KHON, you can you can go and uh, look at the percentage for each island. But uh, and and the, I gotta go once the news is over and then they put the video up. I can go get it and, and uh, try to get a screenshot of the numbers. But uh, it's 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 climbing, and it's more contagious. And uh, you see Honolulu now opening up. They, they they he was able to get the the numbers really moving the goalposts. We talked about the last time, but then. When we came on tonight before we went live and Charlie and I have our little couple minutes of aloha and hi, how are you? How was your day? Charlie pops up the alert that he just received on his phone. So Charlie, I'm gonna share it, but why don't you, why don't you tell us the good news? Well, Governor Ige is a Haima will make an announcement but now for trans-Pacific travelers coming into Hawaii, as long as you can show that you've been fully vaccinated, you don't need to take a pretest. You just come, come on. You know, like, um, now what is that? Wheel of Fortune. Trans-Pacific yeah. traveler, come on down. <laughs> You're the new winner in coming into Hawaii. Freely. So, if uh, he's he's definitely clearing the way for quarantine exemptions for fully vaccinated travelers, and you know, I guess when what can we do? You know, what 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 can we do for our viewers out there? What you know, it's well, like man, this, oh man, alive. You can you can read it yourself right here. The new exemption is mentioned in Ige's latest emergency proclamation issued today. Although not currently available, the exemption will go into effect once established by the director of the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, which is General Hara. Now he has already stated that he doesn't support that. We'll see what, how this thing plays out. I don't know if this is just a move by Governor Ige uh, to make himself look like he's supporting tourism. I don't know. Maybe he's doing, he just said this because he knows that, that uh, General Hara won't do it. Um, and now remember, the governor just approved Maui's request for mandatory post-arrival uh, post testing. Uh, we talked about mixed messages, Charlie. We talk about mixed messages. So now Maui asks for post-arrival testing like the big island. Uh, I saw the question, how come they denied? Uh, yeah, we know that's what the Lieutenant Governor is pushing. I mean, it's crazy, but it is what it is. But uh, the difference between Maui's and Kauai, I think people got to understand that it's not the same request. Maui's request is like the Big Island. Every single visitor that lands in Maui has to get a post-arrival rapid test. The Kauai's request was a second test after quarantine. He, the, the governor is not going to support any kind of restriction that, that includes quarantining of our visitors. And uh, that's the difference. So Maui's request is different, but it's interesting that he would approve Maui's request. And then on the same day or the day after say, we're moving forward for the 
the quarantine pass, I mean, the vaccination passport, which would remove all testing requirements. So again, we talked about mis mixed messages, you know, and uh, we pissed off the Lieutenant Governor. He's upset. He, you know, he says- There's also a section in that we forgot to show the people, but there was a section in there that says that if a person needs to be tested, right? Which one? In the governor's thing, it, it also said that if a test needs to be done, it'll be at the cost at the county, not at the traveler's expense. Correct. <laughs> that 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 was in his that that's in the rules that any testing will be borne by the county and not the visitor. It's so obvious, guys. It's so obvious. I mean, it, but again, this goes back to March 21st when I did my very first. Facebook Live pertaining to this. It was all about the industry. But what I don't get, Charlie, is as we are listening to experts again, and the, and the numbers are climbing throughout many of the states, uh, we in Hawaii are, are loosening up, <laughs> loosening up. And that's what I just don't get. I don't well, get it. Oh, I, I, I do want to know this. Okay, you see that? It's all over. It's all over. It's, there goes the neighbors blasting their thing, whatever. But it's all over, folks. We're, we're using a program that as long as you are fully vaccinated, right? As long as you're fully vaccinated, Trans-Pacific travel will be allowed to come into the state. But look here at the top stories, okay? Fake COVID vaccination cards are spreading like a virus online. Scammers are selling fake FTC warrants of COVID-19. Okay. That's why I said, as long as you got this out, who's going to validate these cards? Who's going to verify that someone is coming in to give them that free pass? I mean, if this was all bogus, this all would be fact-checked already. What's being fact-checked right now is yes, they are selling bogus vaccination cards. Now, most of you who got vaccinated know that your card has a specific lot number, a specific expiration date of the type of vaccine that was given to you, right? When you took your first and when you took your second, those numbers, those numbers to me are more important than my name on that card. Because those numbers mean that that vaccine or that batch is related to a group of vaccines that was released in your state and into your particular county. That's what it's telling me. Mm -hmm. Okay. But they're saying, oh no, everyone has their names listed. Okay. Uh, I, I wanna know where is it listed? And then if you look on the CDC site, you know, because you know, somebody questioned about uh, HIPAA violations and all that. And they, they do cite an area about privacy of information under the IIS, which is the informational immunization or the immunization informational system. But if you read it good, and I was trying to look for it as it pertains to the pandemic, it pertains to when children are vaccinated, right? They get the measles shot or whatever, as they go through this, where they gotta be vaccinated and it keeps a detailed record of when they receive their vaccination. Doesn't It doesn't say anything about what's going on right now. So. Honestly, I, I'm not saying that I'm the expert on this, but I'm far from it. All I'm saying is there are a lot of things involved in this. So who verifies if John Q. Public comes to the Daniel K. Inouye Airport right now with a vaccination card? Nobody. Right. Because the thing is, is what? Is TSA going to do it? You know? You know, who, who's going to do it? It's horrible, man. I tell you, they, they're just playing with fire. They're playing with fire and uh, people are gonna get burned. And I just don't get it. I don't understand why 
that now the governor now is uh, moving forward with that. Uh, where he just said the other day, we're far from it. <laughs> we're far away. It's 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 you know. I, I I almost just gotta give up already, man. I gotta give up listening to these guys, and mm. just uh, you know focus on on the non politicians. You know, just focus right. on the medical doctors. And uh, we got to deal with what these guys decide. I mean, it's, it is what it is, guys. So, you know, I see the comments about tourists. You know, I was in Kapaa Town. I drove through Kapaa Town yesterday uh, afternoon, about 5, 5.15. Tons of visitors. Some of them had masks. Most, most of them didn't. You know what? Whatever. You guys, you know, like I said the other night, don't go near them. Stay away from them. Everybody got to stay away from them. Everybody got to protect yourself because at the rate we're going, the state isn't going to do it for us. We got to do it ourselves. It's that simple. On Monday, we're going to have a, a, a outreach lead for the Department of Health on the vaccination effort. Well, you'll be on on Monday, but you know we got to really start focusing on getting our guys and our friends and our loved ones vaccinated. And um, that, that's going to be part of the solution. That's not the answer. That's not the answer, but it, that's part of the solution. So, guys, I got to tell you, man, it's, it's uh, there is no national database check. I, I'm sorry, Charlie, I just said sidetrack because I saw a question. Yeah. Is there none, a national database not, check? Right. No, there is none. And there will, there will not be one. Uh, the White House has already made that statement. There will be no federal da database. And, you know, it's not simple. all I was referring to is, you know, if, if you read into that provision, there are protected information, okay? But like yeah. I said, there's nothing in there that says anything about this pandemic as far as a vaccination. It, actually, pertain, it actually pertains to children being vaccinated, okay? So there is a difference there. And that's, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. But the thing, the, the thing that... You know, the thing that I, I, I want the people to know is that, okay, and, I, and as you talk, I'm, I'm going to pull out, I'm going to pull out a story, and then I'm going to say, okay, now let's, let's do this. So why don't you tell them, you know, tell them what you're, you're going to say, my brother, just whatever you were, whatever you're going to tell. <laughs> huh? I, I lost my train of thought. I, I, I was just making it up like, okay, tell them what you're going to say. I'm I getting lost in. Somebody Take it over, asked, <laughs> what, what about VAMS? What, what, what is, what is VAMS? VAMS is a scheduling program. VAMS is only yeah. a scheduling vaccine. program. Yeah, vaccine uh, acquired management system, something like that. It's only for scheduling. Yep. It has absolutely nothing to do with tracking the vaccines. It's, it's a scheduling program. So there is no federal, I imagine every state, every city, every county that does their testing, or I'm sorry, their vaccinations differently. They use different types of cards. They use different types of information. How in the hell we're we gonna keep track of all of that? We're not, we're not. And if they think you can just have a card and you can be able to come right through, I, I, don't, I don't even know if I'm gonna go out once our numbers climb. Yeah, I don't know, it's scary. Okay, here, here's, a, here's another one I'll share with all of you. Okay, this is our friend. She's from Minnesota. Her name is Diane Schmidt, okay? Fully vaccinated nurse. She gets there because she takes her daughter. That's the backstory is she took her daughter for vacation, okay? I guess the daughter is graduating. So she took the daughter because I first saw this on Inside Edition a couple of nights ago. She takes the daughter to uh, a, a popular area in Mexico that's tourist related. Okay, so let's 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 do the correlation here. That's tourist related. Two days into her stay, she starts feeling not so good. She goes downstairs into the gift shop, buys some over-the-counter meds because she's getting stuffed in the ass and the whole thing. While the symptoms start getting worse, so she goes to like an urgent equivalent to an urgent care clinic there. Lo and behold, bam, her test reveals. She's COVID positive. Now she's fully vaccinated back in January. 
Okay. So the question is, the group she was with, how many people did she come in contact? You know, the list goes on and on and on, right? So they move her from her room. Okay. Now, this is what you call about monitoring. They bring food for her. They put a table in front of her door to her new room. And, they, and she showed what the room looked like. Nice place. She has a table that food is brought to her because she has to quarantine for 14 days in Mexico. She said that she's very glad that she took the travel insurance because that offset her stay there, right, for 14 days. Now, here's the problem. She said even if she wanted to go out in Mexico, they put a guard in front of her door 24-7. Just imagine if we had that over here. I think people would take this virus a little bit more serious if we did that. But we didn't even do that. So that's why people love to come to Hawaii because our bark is louder than the bite, right? Well, first of all, I'm very sorry that she got COVID. But what the hell is she going to Mexico during a pandemic, you know? But I feel sorry for her. I'll pray for her tonight. But she should be stuck in Mexico. I mean, that's just what happens. You visitors come over here and you get sick and you bring your virus. You, you, you should be in an armed guard room that you cannot leave for 14 days. That, that's, you're right, Charlie. The bark, rough, rough. <laughs> but no more bite. No more bite. No more bite. It's like my chihuahua. Plenty noise before she I dies. Seen, I seen these, I seen these mean dogs. They bark, yeah? You go close. They no more teeth. No more teeth, only get gums. Yeah. So I have no problem getting bit by a dog with only gums. Have teeth, forget it. But only get gums, eh, I breathe. Yeah. Yeah, that, that'd be pretty cool, actually. Them gum you. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing. I mean, we're seeing these stories pop up. We know that the vaccine doesn't protect you from uh, catching the virus or even getting sick. We know that already. I mean, you know, people... Our lieutenant governor can say whatever he wants. He can try to convince you that you get the shot, you're done, you're safe, you can travel, you can. And somebody asked about inner island uh, vaccine passport. No, no, no. That that not. It's we're a safe travel. That's it. There is no vaccination passport yet. The governor basically said it'll be okay when the director of the Haima, which is General Hara, says it's okay. Now I would be shocked if General Hara, Hara approves it without any type of uh, uh, tracking, any type of legitimate uh, verification of these cards, which is somewhat impossible right now. Technology doesn't exist. So I don't anticipate it happening. I don't know why the governor said it, but again, he said it. Now everybody's all excited. They're happy. They like him now. They're happy. But uh, what is reality? Uh, we'll see. If General Hara approves it, I'll be surprised. I will be surprised because Haima is going to be tasked with the consequence. Not the governor. It's going to be Haima. So, you know, I, I'm tired of listening to politicians. I'll just be honest with you, man. I'm tired of listening to politicians. Keep on talking crap every single time you listen to them. Uh, yeah, Nani, General Hara, he's not with the passport. Okay? He said it already. So I'm not sure if he's going to stick to his guns or he's going to cave in like many others. But I'm tired of listening to these guys. You know, I'm tired of being being lied to and being, you know, with the carrot dangling in front of our faces. Come I, on. I want to show you something. Okay. Both my wife and I got vaccinated. Okay. And they supposedly use the official CDC vaccination card, right? We got it from the same location. It's just different times. I got mine, both of my vac vaccinations by the ending, by, by actually the uh, third week in January, I was done already. Because I took my first in December. My wife just finished up hers, her second shot, just a little while ago, okay? I wanna show you something and you tell me if this looks legit to you, we both went to the same hospital to get vaccinated. 
Notice the different size in cards. That no longer tell me, wait a minute. Should it, if it's coming from an official, if this is an official card of vaccination, wouldn't you think they all be either all this size or all that size, but not two different sizes? That kind of stuff gets me wondering sometimes. So I said, gee, if I was that inspection worker, so at the airport, who does the inspection? Probably the state gonna make Roberts Hawaii again because they're the ones been doing all the checking all this time, right? At the airports. Will, you know, will, will they be trained how to detect what's a fraudulent card? Will they be giving, because the thing is this now, these two cards were produced with information from the same hospital that my wife and I went to get our vaccination here in Hawaii. Just imagine you got people with these kind of cards, right? Coming from 49 different states into Hawaii if they so choose so, right? So we yep. might have one that one well, card might be round. We don't know. That's why I said, you know, is, is somebody gonna put out what is a standardized card, right? I haven't heard anything about that. And maybe Mel, that's just the, the ex cop in me, you know. So these these are, you know, these, these are these are the kind of things that uh, and then uh, here's another thing to, re to remember, folks. A lot of us who got the first batch, we got these stickers because I, I guess it was printed out when we were vaccinated, we got stickers. Right. Over time, the printing on the stickers starts to disappear. So now we have, but good thing I took a photo of it when it was bright, when, when it was very identifiable. But you know, if you got one of those where the thing that does, the, is disappearing, I would say go back to the place you got it from and have them either reissue you a card or write it in for you with a lot number, and all that out of good information. Okay, that's what, what I would do. Well, let me let me show you a website that was. Um, oops, what's going on here? Okay, pro enamel toothpaste. What is that? Those? <laughs> well, I don't know what's going on here. What? It, anyway, I think it's. I'm, I don't know why it's spinning, but um, you see that in the back, the dark. <laughs> there. I'm sorry, because it's this thing is spinning. Anyway, it's 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 you can't, it's hard to see, but what it says is four pack COVID nineteen vaccination record card CDC. It's eighty dollars, and you can purchase this online. This site has been taken down by the feds, but this is the types of sites that are out there if you can find them where you can actually purchase blank cards from a website for eighty bucks, twenty bucks a piece, and this is what I'm talking about. There is no database. There is no verification process. I wish I could get that stupid thing to stop spinning. But anyway, that's that was a, an actual site that was taken down by the feds. It was a Shopify site. It was one of those e-commerce sites that anyone can put up for free. And uh, they were selling blanks that you fill in. There yeah. is no validation process. There will be no validation process. So for the governor to come out and say, He's cleared the way. Hello. I just I just want to respond to one of our viewers. He says, when you get a vaccination, the hospitals input the validation information in the Department of Health computer system. Cannot be fraudulent. Okay, I get that. But what I'm trying to say is when that information comes to someone who's not in the healthcare industry that's going to inspect your card. Is there a system that allows them to verify that you have been vaccinated? That's all I can say. Nope. Okay. Because you might be legit, but it may be two days before you get the information. So what do you do with the person in the meantime? Are they quarantine? Or do you just let them pass and say, okay, we find out you legit, no harm, no foul. But if you're not legit, who going, who going to find you? Who going out there find you? After you got that past the checkpoint, right? And then Charlie, 
you brought up that brilliant scenario last week. They're saying we're going to probably need boosters every six months. Right. So January, you get your shot. Your shot expires. And depending on which one, now we get three vaccines. Mm -hmm. and we don't even know how long each one lasts. But let's just say Pfizer is six months. Let's say Moderna is eight months. Let's say J&J &J is a year. Can you imagine the screen? Imagine the screening fiasco at the airport when you come in. Hang on, hang on, guys. Charlie, what is your Pfizer? Five, six months. Okay, January. Uh, oh, okay. Next, Moderna. Oh, you know that line at the airport. All oh, that not social distance, unmasked tourists and locals. Because you gotta now gotta go check. Is yours current or is yours expired? <laughs> That's what I don't understand, you know. These guys are just taking it so lightly. Yeah, Green said they're looking at apps where they can upload their cards. Oh, here oh, we go again. Exactly, God, I mean. <laughs> here we go again, some more apps. Yeah, he, he said he's oh. working with two companies. Two no, companies. it's not. I just, bear, I'm gonna put up later. The apps they're talking about is appetizers they serve you while you're waiting in a damn line for a couple of hours. They will give you appetizers, it's not that. I mean, listen, let me just put it in, a, in, a, in, a, in the context of a real world scenario. You are in a store and you, you just sold $300 worth of stuff from your shop. And here comes a visitor or a resident and you tell them, hi there, it's $300. Imagine them giving you a Xerox copy of a credit card, front and back. Oh, I don't have my card, but here, here's my, um, here's my credit card. I mean, you, would you even take that? Would you take that? No, you would not. But we are going to allow someone to take a picture of a card and upload it into a Safe Travels app which is just like a freaking picture of a credit card that may not be yours. Cause you know, you can Photoshop the credit card after you take the picture. Can you imagine if you had an employee or if you're an employee, can you imagine coming back and your boss asking you, did you do this transaction? Yeah, I sold $300, I had a great sale. Yeah, but had, had, that card is stolen, that card, well, but no, she had a picture of it. You see what I'm saying? As ludicrous as that may sound, that is what our state is, is wanting us to do in a pandemic with a deadly virus. I mean, please, guys. Do they really think we're that stupid? Charlie, do you, do you think that they think we're that stupid? That we no. just go lay back and say, who? Must be okay because Governor Ige said, or Josh Green said. We we are participating in, um, we, we are being used as a, a pilot program to see how we can catch, we can catch uh, JIT cards and fraudulent cards. That's what he said. He called it a pilot. He wants to do a pilot program for inter island travel. Oh. And I'm not being antagonistic. I'm not being antagonistic. I'm just being real. You see, I guess, Charlie, maybe you and I see things through a different lens because of the law enforcement background and we, we've seen so much fraud. You know, people that- No, no, it, it's, it's like this. It's like this, okay? When I was in a DUI team, we had the highest stats in the state. Because why? We want to keep down fatalities. So you stop a car, and I get them on video. Weaving back and forth, almost going into oncoming traffic, weaving all over the place. I go up, I get the camera rolling, I get my microphone on my lapel. I go, hi, sir, my name is Alpha CEO. And the reason I stopped you is because I saw you had a little erratic driving pattern. And I said, uh, are you on any medication right now? Oh. 
you know, I can smell a heavy odor of uh, liquor coming from the vehicle here. Can you put your window down a little bit more? And the worst thing they can do, you know how these Lolos, instead of opening the window all the way, they leave yeah. them small like this and they talk to you. You know how stupid is that? It allows the smell on the inside to come out in a more concentrated form because it's so, so I get you the full wave ago. Have you been? Um, Having a little drinks tonight. I just had one. <laughs> and I would say, okay, one, what, a glass, a galley, what, a barrel? How much did you? <laughs> I said, sir, we step out of your car. And I get them rolling. And I said, so I got to look down, make sure no many cars, sir, step out of your car, please. We step out. And I already know, and they, and they teach you. You know, some of these things bother me like this, right? Don't stand in the front because when they fall, you think they're going to fall backwards, right? No. Drunk people, they catch themselves and they, and they fling themselves forward and they fall into you. That's right. Don't stand in front of them. Stand in the back. Or they're going to do an exorcist on you one time. They're going to fire away. But that's that's what I'm trying to say. If somebody going to tell you, nah, I never have one drink, but you have all the indicators as such. What are you supposed to do? I know you heard this one, Charlie. They only had two. I only had two. Yeah, you had two. You had the first one and the last one. You forgot to count all the ones in between. No, you know why? They go, I only had two. You know why? Because I was born with only two fingers. So two. <laughs> For those of you, uh, Rhonda Morris, if you didn't see her post, she just said, L-M-A-O, laughing my okole off. I, I know some of you think that's far-fetched, but I work security. And people would try to show me a picture of their ID to get in. Uh, no. So guys, it happens. It's going to happen. And, and, the, and it's, it's scary because we're dealing with a, a situation now that is, uh, you know, again, getting worse, getting more risky. Yes, we're getting more safer with, because of vaccines. But nonetheless, we still got a large population that hasn't been vaccinated. We still get uh, kids that aren't vaccinated. So we got to be careful. This, guys. this so, program, to me, I, this is what I think, to be fair and honest with everybody because we are taking travelers both re local residents returning home but we don't know where they were they went and, and coming back and we are taking travelers from all different states right i think as long as the numbers are rising out there we should not entertain a program like this we shouldn't we should entertain a program like this when it starts to lower itself. Then we can say, okay, now there's evidence the vaccine is working. Because if you look at nationwide totals, they still haven't gotten everybody. And yet we, we are basing this program on the assumption that everybody's vaccinated. Now, if you only had 20% people vaccinated so far nationwide, right? Just say, use it hypothetically, 20%. We should look at our numbers and our numbers say, gee, we get more than 20% of people coming over here. The numbers, the numbers ain't matching up. Because if on one end they, they say that, okay, we have a total of 20% nationwide have been vaccinated. Okay. I mean, sounds kind of far-fetched, but you know what? I, I, ain't the, I, ain't, I ain't the brightest star in the galaxy, but you tell me, if it's 16% and we get over 32% travelers, I go then uh, where out of 16% came from and uh, who's, uh, who's a vaccination card did they use? You know? So it's just one of those things. Yeah. Jose is asking if you medevac to Honolulu with a caregiver now coming back to, coming back, do I have to test? Also my caregiver has to test. Depends what island, Jose. If you're on Kauai, uh, yeah, you got to test, or you got to get the exemption, the, the modified exemption from the, the county. So it all depends. We had this discussion the other night on the show. Um, you go ahead and apply for the exemption at the county of Kauai, uh, www.kauai.gov. They will review your request and determine, but the plan on getting a test before you come home, that's the guarantee. Uh, then you don't have to quarantine. Uh, when you return, but um, www.kawaii.gov, click on the COVID-19 button, and then it explains the, the modified quarantine for medical purposes. 
and go ahead and, and apply for that. Uh, but again, it's case by case and uh, there's never a guarantee. So that's just the rules because Kauai cares. Because and Kauai then, cares. Well, someone told me today that there's option. If you don't get vaccinated and you cannot participate in this program and you want to travel here, that you got a quarantine. Okay. But I think the point is the lieutenant governor and now the governor is making it very clear they're trying to get away from that quarantine program. Okay. So now the question becomes, you got to get somebody at the top that can hold a line real strong because you're going to get all these different scenarios popping up. And one size doesn't fit all. But you got to make that call. Because what are we trying to attain here? Safety. Safety first. That's what we're trying to do. Okay. Just because someone feels that, hey, they don't feel sick. I bet, you know, when, when we first had the breakout of cases on in Hawaii, whoever brought it over here, they felt they wasn't sick. But guess what? They would deposit that poop over here that started to spread. And like I said the other night, I'm one for, let's try to curb this thing and contain it or move it off the island. But just don't keep on kicking it to one side of the state to the other. You know, you know that, that's what you call a slow death, right? You know, you, you put something out of its misery, put it out of its misery, but don't just keep on, you know, fumbling with it. It's, it's, yeah. What, what is um, what is so ironic is, remember uh, House Bill 1286, the whole purpose of House Bill 1286 was to alleviate confusion for the visitors, yep. for the visitors. And uh, so Kauai joins safe travel, Psyche withdraws his language from the Senate bill, basically killing that because he felt we were all, now it's not confusing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Big Island get testing, Maui gonna get testing. Um, and now, and now we're heading towards a vaccination passport. Where to go? Where to go, Psyche? Where to go? Unbe now, now you understand why, Charlie. Now you understand why Psyche pulled it. He didn't pull it because Kauai had joined. No, he pulled it because the governor said, hey, jackass. You cannot take that authority away from me. That's my call. Take that language out. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to go into the passport program. Yes, sir. Consider it done, sir. Unbelievable, man. Talk about confusing. Uh, we probably get the most confusing state. In the and country. you know what they going to say? They're going to remove the mask mandate. And they're going to say, if you want to travel, you have to be fully vaccinated. You cannot wear a mask on a plane, but you must wear one eye patch over your right eye. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Well, then what are we going to do? In this troubled time, I, you know, this, you know. I think it's time to bring Augie T back on and, her, and Frank DeLima <laughs> and, and uh, have some jokes because... Uh, you know, we gotta. We gotta if, you, if you dwell on this nonsense, you're gonna get sick. You know, you're gonna get sick. You're gonna get angry. Uh, I think we gotta kind of distract ourselves a little bit. Do some nice things. Um, random acts of kindness. You know, stuff like that. I don't know, cause cause this stuff gets every day. You know, today we're supposed to do a feel good Friday. Um, business is all busy now. Um, a lot of the businesses are are back working and. So, you know, it's hard to get businesses on and, and uh, but, oh, I, I did have a, a little bit of good news. You know, I did that video of the Hanalei River erosion. Um, and this is not a political endorsement or anything. I'm just going to say, I'm telling like it is. I sent that video, obviously I posted it. I sent that video to Congressman Kai Kahele. I sent it to our state the, the uh, Kauai director of Trans the Department of Transportation boss, and I sent it to our public works engineer. 
I got no response from the state and I got no response from the county. I got a response that night. I sent the video to Kai via email. I got a response that night saying, hey, I'll, I'll look in, I'll watch the video. I'll check it out, something like that. Next thing I know, boom, he's on Kauai on Wednesday on a boat checking out Hanley River. And I saw him after he came off. I saw, I actually saw him in Lihue and he, and he said, I said, hey, bro, mahalo for coming and responding and going up the river. I said, what did you think? He said, it's alarming. But I see Charlie laughing. He must be reading some funny comments. I don't know. But oh, because yeah, I, just, I just want to say mahalo to uh, Congressman Kai Kahele, our representative at Congress, um, as far as responding, getting to the island, getting on a boat in a river, checking out erosion. And um, now he's going to make the calls to the state Department of Transportation and to the county. And maybe, maybe, maybe they'll respond to him. They didn't respond to me. Yep. So appreciate that. Reason I laughed at because our viewers that we love so much, one saying, yeah, we get one, get eye patch. You're gonna have to wear an eye patch, the other one saying, yeah, and you gotta put two tampons in your nose when you go. <laughs> that might work. I might, don't, you know, I haven't traveled. It's getting harder and harder uh, as time goes on, you know, Charlie, and you know this because your kids aren't here either. So it gets harder and harder, you know. We did a FaceTime the other night with my daughter and it just sucks. And I, you know, I talk to my son a few times a week and it sucks. Yeah. But if I ever, if I ever get on a plane, tampons in the nose, bro, I like that. I like that. Does it come in small sizes? Because I mean, I have a big long nose, but the nostril is not that big. So, I mean, I hope they make them small. Well, just be careful. But you know, you put them in your nose and you fall asleep, right? you might choke. You know, you know the string, you might go, it suck the string down your throat, then what? You'll jam up. So just, just, just be careful. Well, Ooh, you're wrapping up. That hour went by quick, man. It's always fun with you, bro. It's always fun with our viewers. Up. Always fun, man. I don't know what you plan this weekend, bro. I gotta. I think tomorrow we might go do a, a Facebook live at a local uh, establishment. Grab some well, local guys. I did want to say that, uh, you know, some of the things that we bring up here, you know, I, I, I wish I could take the attitude, well, let's see what happens. But we know we know that things can turn bad really fast. And so that's why I, I want to stay away, with, for, away from that kind of thing. I don't want to see when things happen because you know who I feel sorry for at that point? I feel sorry for the frontline workers. They're expected to pick up everybody else's crap. They're going to get thrown right into the, the, the thick of things. They're not going to see their family because why? Not everybody can work in on ICU. We said that before. But for some reason, there's people out there that think, well, I get plenty of nurses. Yeah, if, if you know, the nurses who watch um, long-term care patients, their specialties are, are totally different than a nurse who works, um, you know, in, in an ICU unit. I mean, I was just talking to a couple of them today at our hospital here. And you know the the question remains. You know I haven't seen the government sending in any traveling nurses because maybe there's no need. There's no need to right. So that's why I say, well, if there's no need, then let's not push the envelope to make it a need. Then everybody gonna have to start scrambling and we'll get stuck in. And I, and I just, you know, Mel, that's that's what I don't want to see. So when we bring up these scenarios about these cards. You want to start a program, okay? And I've said this before. If you want to start a certain program, there should be uniformity amongst the state so everybody know what they're looking at. Everybody's on the same page. Just because you have a piece of three by five card that says CDC, doesn't make it a CDC official record. It doesn't. And all I'm saying is, you know, I wish our state would sometimes, instead of being quick to draw, 
stand by, see if the government will put something up or participating states will put something out. So therefore, if 35 of the 50 states participate, at least we know what the card is gonna look from the participating 35 states, right? Mm -hmm. that participate in this program, then we'll get a better read on it. But right now, it's just like, hey, I'll let all hell break loose and just, you know, take whatever we give you. And like you said, you try to get on paper, credit card, right? Try to stick them in for read the, the chip. Guess what? It'll be like toilet paper. We get stuck in there and jam up the machine. You need the real deal. And that's all I've been saying from before. Let's get the real deal. Then, hey, I have no problem. You know, I have no problem. Uh, the thing we got to remember too, I know, I know, you know, when the when the state does their reporting, whether it's the governor, whether it's the lieutenant governor, whether it's Blanjardi or whenever, um, when they talk about the hospital beds or ICUs, you know, we have this forty patients in the in the hospital. They're talking COVID patients. They're they're counting only COVID. Listen, ICU is not only for COVID. ICU a ventilator is not only for COVID. Mm -hmm. If you go to the COVID-19 or HawaiiCOVID19.com and you and, and go to the data dashboard, it tells you exactly how many hospital beds are in use, COVID and non-COVID. You see that the, the bed don't give a damn if you're COVID or not. When you get into an accident, God forbid, or you have a heart attack, God forbid, you need an ICU bed. You may need a ventilator. It, it doesn't discriminate. It's not just COVID. You know, but when you when you fill up these beds with COVID patients, you're taking away co uh, beds from people that may need it. That's what I don't get. Everything is so minimized, and that people are starting to get this false sense of security, and they're starting to let the guard down. I said that on the news the other night. I pissed all the leaders off. Tough cookies, eat it, own it. It's yours, guys. It's yours. So anyway, Charles, anything? Before we leave, any words of encouragement before our weekend? Uh, I just want everybody to be safe. This, this is a beautiful weekend. Um, you know, wherever you're at, you know, drive with aloha. I, I know people's tempers are getting pretty short. I, I did want to say this here on the island of Kauai in Waimea at our um, one of our famous Shevai stands. I passed by and I saw a bunch of tourists but i'm happy to say while they were waiting sitting waiting for their turn to go in and make their order they were all masked up the ones who were eating weren't masked but i did see some putting on their masks after they were done so i'm happy to see that that tells me that hey there are people out there that's responsible and i wish we can let our guard down if everybody was to be responsible but yet we've seen time and time again that all it takes is one bad apple to spoil the whole bunch. And that's why everybody's all up in arms. So, you know, just let's have this, uh, let's let's have a great weekend, gang. Make it, make it, make it uh make it a good one. You know, take your time, be be loving to one another. And for those of you who saw my video today, when I talked about active shooting, it is real. Thank God it's not happening in Hawaii, but Hawaii is having its fair share of home invasion. So it's almost the same. If you got to barricade your home and poop with your home, please do it. And for those of you that live next to a kupuna, please check on them regularly. Because right now, times are so bad until we can get this economy back up to speed. People re will resort to desperate measures, and I don't want to see anybody getting hurt because of it. Okay? So let us all do our part and let's take care because why? We are fun-loving people. Well said, Charles. Well said, man. You know, um, weekend is here. Enjoy the weekend. Uh, yeah, when you, when you see, I, I'm reading the post and I'm, I'm talking at the same time. But yeah, man, you know, I mean, there's a lot of tourists here that are following the rules. There's majority of them are wearing their masks. Uh, and that's that, that we need to be thankful. But um, it all comes down to us again. You know, Kauai vaccinating anybody, a anyone, um, except the kids, of course, but all, all ages, let's go get your registration, get, get register, get your shots, whether it's the two shot, the one shot, get it done, wear your mask, wash your hands, social distance, and stop going to large gatherings. If we all do that, we'll be good.
Oh, and uh, don't okay. forget, uh, for those of you, if you get your shot and you get large swelling and if they, your shot is supposed to be in your arm, okay? If they start administering your shot to your eyebrows, that's Botox. That is not a vaccination shot, that's Botox, okay? Gotta be in your arms. Because some people out there, they don't know where a shot is supposed to go, right now? Yeah. All right, Charles, you have a wonderful weekend. You guys all stay safe. God bless. We love you guys. We'll see you guys on Monday night. Okay, man. Aloha. Oh.